It is no secret that modern cars contain lots of electronics. These electronics are distributed over a large number of little computing entities all over the car. They're called electronic control units, ECUs. Many of these units need to exchange data. Take a simple example. Imagine the driver's door. The central lock system needs to control the locks of all other doors, including the trunk. From the driver's door, the driver can control all the windows and adjust the mirrors, including that on the passenger side. If only these few functions received dedicated wiring, the result would be a lot of cables. An average car today has 60 ECUs. For high-end cars, more than 200 ECUs are not uncommon, with many additional sensors and actuators to connect them. If all of this communication had to be done by dedicated wire connections, it would be impossible to build. The car would be dominated by cables. The car would be heavy, with little space for passengers, and it would be impossible to find the source of any errors that would be likely to occur in such a scenario. This is where in-vehicle networking, IVN technologies, come into play. They allow many ECUs to share the same wiring for their communication needs in a coordinated manner. This saves cables, space, weight, and allows developing the modern cars that we are used to. There are a number of different IVN technologies available, each with different capacities. In the following, we'll explain the basic functioning of the most commonly used technologies, namely CAN, FlexRay and Ethernet. We'll start with the controller area network, abbreviated as CAN, which is the most commonly used in-vehicle networking technology today, and which was introduced into the market as early as 1992. At the point of its introduction, there were still very few electronics in cars. So to explain how the system works, Imagine a small village that consists of a few houses, each of which represent one ECU, and a road connecting these that represents the CAN. The trucks here represent the CAN messages, and their load the information that is to be shared. Firstly, on a CAN road the traffic is not coordinated. When a household has information to share, for example, the outside temperature, it simply puts this information in a little truck and sends it out on the road. The number plate of the truck concerned indicates the type of information that can be found inside. The appearance of a truck on the road simply broadcasts to all households that new information is available. This means that all households have to observe the road constantly the risk of failing to spot a load. It is available for however many interested parties there might be. It could be all households, only one household, or even none at all. For the CAN system, it makes no difference. Because there's no coordinated schedule, it can occur that two trucks want to use the CAN road at the same time. This would cause a collision with loss of information. Priority is given to the one with the lower number on the number plate. The truck with the higher number needs to wait for road access until it has the lowest number plate itself. CAN thus functions on extremely simple and straightforward principles. All information is simply broadcast whenever it is available. The only higher authority order there is are the number plates, called identifiers in CAN. These number plates need to be assigned and organised up front during the development phase of the car or village. Only ever one household can use a particular number. So the households need to say up front which information they would want to share. Then someone and it is here a real person performing this task, 
has to decide on the importance of each part of information and assign the number plates. For every such village, a list is generated that contains all number plates, identifiers, what content each represents, and which household or ECU generates that content, called the message catalogue in CAM. All households are developed with that list in mind. This is still straightforward, but what happens if the system changes and, for example, another household is added after the village has been established? The CAM village can't automatically detect this. Someone, again a real person, has to decide on the number plates to be given to the added household. New lists need to be generated and all households have to be updated accordingly. So what happens to the CAN road when the village grows even more? When the traffic on a CAN road gets too busy, it can happen that trucks with low priority number plates can no longer access the road in time. This is why it's recommended to use CAN only at about 50% of its maximum capacity to ensure that low priority information will also have had the chance to access the road before it has become obsolete. If there's more traffic than this 50% capacity, another solution needs to be found. One is to allow for larger and faster trucks on broader roads. For this purpose, CAN FD was developed. But what if the capacity of CAN FD is also attained? Develop the next CAN that's even faster and allows for even larger messages? Making the roads bigger and allowing for faster and larger trucks doesn't solve the principal problems of CAN. The car industry resolved to extend the capacity of CAN with the help of gateways. A gateway can be imagined as a kind of loading dock between two CAN roads. A truck with a specific load and number plate from CAN Road 1 drives into the loading dock and parts of its load are moved to another truck with a different number plate tailored for the CAN Road 2. This way, information from CAN Road 1 can be made available on CAN Road 2. However, as previously said, a CAN truck doesn't know its recipients, so how can it be known which information needs to be copied over? Again, someone needs to design it into the system up front. Now, the external bookkeeping also has to know all interested recipients up front. This means more and larger lists, including one for the loading dock that identifies which cargo from what number plate on one row should go on what number plate truck on the other. Please be aware, today's cars do not just have two CAN roads, but many. Now, imagine that in this setup a household moves from one road to another. Naturally, the car industry has grown with these challenges and has established a large number of processes and tools to support them. However, why not use a different communication technology, better equipped for more complex communication systems to begin with? 